Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today begins a bit of a second wave of laptop testing as we look to finish up our benchmarking of 2021's massive wave of hardware releases. We have lots of stuff coming up, including some more Intel CPU reviews, more Ryzen 5000 Ultra Portable APU reviews, and as you will have seen by the title of this video, more mobile GPU reviews. In this video, we are checking out NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3050 Ti laptop GPU, which was announced alongside the RTX 3050 for laptops a couple of months back. But with the current supply constraints facing laptop manufacturers around the world right now, it has of course taken us a bit longer than we would have liked to get RTX 3050 Ti laptop samples in hand. The 3050 Ti is NVIDIA's mainstream gaming laptop GPU, sitting below the RTX 3060 in the product stack, and offering us a follow-up to last year's GTX 1660 Ti and to a lesser extent the GTX 1650 for laptops. With the graduation from GTX branding to RTX, this means that NVIDIA's mainstream offering supports RTX features for the first time, including real-time ray tracing and DLSS, the latter of which in particular is a nice boost for this popular market. As you can imagine, in the current market, pricing is all over the place for laptops. NVIDIA originally listed the RTX 3060 as destined for $1,000 laptops, with the RTX 3050 at $800, and presumably the 3050 Ti sitting in between, so I'd expect around $900. This would match the baseline prices of GTX 1660 Ti systems from previous generations. However, these pricing targets are a bit optimistic. Most realistic 3050 Ti system configurations are above $1,000, though still $100 to $200 less than the exact same model with the RTX 3060 inside. It's a bit hard to compare generations right now, but that should be a rough guide to where NVIDIA are positioning this GPU. The RTX 3050 Ti laptop GPU is based on new GA107 silicon, which as of right now is yet to reach the desktop GPU market. Standard warning applies here for when the RTX 3050 Ti launches on desktop, that despite the laptop part having a very similar name, it likely won't have the same specifications or performance. NVIDIA's current RTX 30 series for laptops is generally speaking a large step down from what their name equivalent desktop cards provide as we've tested in previous videos. So basic specifications, 20 SMs for a total of 2560 CUDA cores, 20 RT cores and 80 tensor cores. Clock speeds of up to 1695 MHz boost at 80 watts or as low as 1035 MHz for the 35 watt configuration, giving us quite a wide power range of 35 to 80 watts. There's also just four gigabytes of GDDR6 memory here on a 128 bit bus clocked at 12 gigabits per second. Basically, the 3050 Ti is designed to be two-thirds of an RTX 3060 in its SM count and VRAM capacity. NVIDIA are also trying to cater for both normal gaming laptops and ultra-portable systems, with the RTX 3050 Ti's large power range including 35-watt models that previously would have been branded as Max-Q. This makes it crucially important to check the power specifications of any laptop you're buying, as 80-watt models won't come close to 35-watt models in performance. And unfortunately, NVIDIA is using the same name for both, despite this discrepancy. Today's test system is the XMG Core 17, a neat 17-inch gaming laptop with a focus on functionality and performance. I've been quite impressed with what XMG has provided in the past in areas like cooling performance, build quality, and included hardware. The Core 17 is no exception there, and it does so in a simple design that is built for value. If you're interested in this specific model, we have a link in the description below to learn more. However, the findings from this review should apply to many RTX 3050 Ti laptop models. Internally, there is an Intel Core i7-11800H processor and 16GB of dual-channel DDR4-3200 memory, good quality stuff that doesn't hinder performance. There's also a 1080p 144Hz IPS display here, and for my configuration, 1TB of SSD storage. The GeForce RTX 3050 Ti inside runs at between 80 and 95 watts with dynamic boost enabled, so we're getting a look at the highest power configuration NVIDIA allows for this part. Resizable bar is also supported. The focus of today will be on 1080p testing with Optimus enabled, which is the default configuration in most laptops that sees the GPU's output routed through the iGPU to the display. I've also tested at 1440p using an external display connected directly to the GPU, which gives us the least limited experience at a higher resolution. Onto the charts. We'll kick things off with a look at Metro Exodus running ultra settings at 1080p. 
Here the RTX 3050 Ti performs roughly on par with the RTX 2060 in average frame rate, putting it slightly ahead of the GTX 1660 Ti, all with similar power limits. However, the 3050 Ti does have the lowest 1% low figure, despite having a powerful CPU that should not pose a CPU bottleneck for this class of GPU. In comparison to the RTX 3060, the 3050 Ti ends up 17% slower at the same power limit, and 34% slower when comparing the highest power limits each GPU has to offer. It's a similar situation at 1440p. While the RTX 3050 Ti isn't badly unplayable here, especially if you drop the quality settings from ultra tested here down to high, this GPU still ends up 25% slower than the RTX 3060 when comparing 80 watts versus 80 watt configurations. In Borderlands 3, tested using 1080p Ultra settings, the RTX 3050 Ti is faster than the 90W RTX 2060, a healthy 7% faster in fact, though this reduces to a 7% deficit when comparing to the 115W RTX 2060. With that said, we're looking at 11% faster performance than the GPU it's replacing, the GTX 1660 Ti, and 14% worse performance than the RTX 3060 at 80 watts. At 1440p again, you can see the RTX 3050 Ti is a class behind its 3060 compatriots. In this particular game, the higher power 3060 at 115 watts is 40% faster than the 3050 Ti, which is a large performance increase, though of course the higher tier GPU does have 50% more CUDA cores to go with its higher power limit. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the RTX 3050 Ti is again on par with the RTX 2060 90 watt configuration at 1080p using high settings. This places it slightly faster than the GTX 1660 Ti, about 6% faster in this title. While this is somewhat playable at 1080p, it's a clear class below the RTX 3060, which offers 31% higher frame rates even with the lower 80 to 95 watt power model. Then at 1440p, the RTX 3050 Ti struggles. It's actually competitive with the RTX 3060 80 watts here, but well behind the higher power variant, which can offer a 60fps experience at this resolution and quality settings. Rainbow Six Siege running at 1080p medium settings gives us a good look at how GPU limited you'll typically be in competitive shooters. The 3050 Ti is powerful enough that it's not too far off laptops that are fully CPU limited with more powerful hardware, but it's also just slightly GPU limited, offering 220 FPS versus the 260 plus FPS we know this CPU can handle. However, this is clearly excellent performance for a laptop, the 3050 Ti is more than enough for this game. Assassin's Creed Valhalla using 1080p very high settings is a bit of a disaster for the RTX 3050 Ti. These settings present a strong VRAM limitation for a 4GB card like the 3050Ti, with even the old GTX 1060 6GB delivering better performance due to its extra 2GB of VRAM. This shows the issue with Nvidia going backwards on VRAM capacity in this price tier. The GTX 1660Ti used to offer 6GB, but the reduction to 4GB is simply not sufficient for some modern titles like this. And of course, the issue is no better at 1440p, with the higher resolution straining the VRAM capacity further. Cyberpunk 2077 is generally not that playable on the RTX 3050 Ti using ultra settings at 1080p, at least without DLSS. This preset is simply too much for a GPU like this, so I'd strongly recommend reducing to medium settings. VRAM does play a part in the performance deficit between this GPU and the RTX 2060, however it's not the same disaster as we saw in Assassin's Creed. The RTX 3060 is a much better choice for this game and settings combination, offering at least 35% more performance at a similar power level. At 1440p in this title, performance falls away even harder, now with a 1% low of just 9fps. This is again due to having just 4GB of VRAM. These settings are right on the edge at 1080p and probably limiting performance to some degree. Then you move up to 1440p and it's just too much. This also causes issues with ray tracing, as this feature increases VRAM allocation, which in the games I tried like Cyberpunk, tends to lead to a heavily compromised ray tracing experience even with DLSS enabled, you're looking at medium or lower settings with minimum level ray tracing. In Horizon Zero Dawn, using maximum settings at 1080p, the RTX 3050 Ti is slightly faster than the RTX 2060 90 watt, delivering a nice 60 FPS experience here on the native laptop display. With that said, performance is 18% behind the highest power configuration of the RTX 3060. 
At 1440p, the game is still playable using the higher settings, which is great to see, though you have to settle for below 60 FPS and ensure you aren't using Optimus. Death Stranding at 1080p shows the RTX 3050 Ti to once again be very similar in gaming performance to the RTX 2060 90W configuration. This GPU is 15% slower than the RTX 3060 at 80 watts, and beyond that we start hitting CPU limitations with some GPUs. At 1440p, while the game is playable using the very high preset, performance is well down from the RTX 3060 in even its base 80 watt configuration. The final game we're looking at in detail today is Dirt 5. In this title at 1080p using the Ultra preset, I was able to hit identical performance between the 3050Ti and the 2060 at 90 watts, so not bad here. Performance ends up 15% slower than the 3060 80 watts and 26% slower than the higher 115 watt power configuration. Meanwhile at 1440p, the 3050Ti does hold up to some degree, though you should expect a 40fps experience, so you might want to lower quality settings. Looking at some head-to-head -head comparisons in our larger overall suite of games that we tested, the end result is that the RTX 3050 Ti is quite similar to the RTX 2060 at a similar power configuration. In games that aren't VRAM or CPU limited at 1080p, on average the 3050 Ti is within a few percent. However, the reduction in VRAM from 6 to 4 gigabytes is a killer in titles like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Control, and Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing enabled. In those games, you'll need to turn down quality settings, where performance should be restored to RTX 2060 level, while the RTX 2060 of course is not limited in this way. The RTX 2060 was also available in a 115 watt power configuration. Using a limited selection of games, the RTX 3050 Ti looks to be around 10% slower outside of situations where the VRAM limit comes into play. This gives a valuable look at highest power limit versus highest power limit, though I should note that the majority of 2060 gaming laptops I've seen use either an 80 or 90 watt limit, not 115 watts, so the previous chart may be more of use to you. Then when looking at the 3050 Ti versus GTX 1660 Ti, the 1660 Ti previously was in this weird situation where in a lot of games it wasn't that much slower than the RTX 2060 at the same sort of power limit. Here when comparing 80 watts versus 80 watts, the 3050 Ti was 7% faster in a limited selection of games at 1080p, with the best results in the 10 plus percent range. Though again, the VRAM limit is something to keep in mind, as the 3050Ti has just 4GB versus the 1660Ti's 6GB. Up against modern GPUs, the 3050Ti doesn't fare as well. At 1080p, this mainstream GPU was 21% slower on average than the RTX 3060 configured to a similar power limit. This should give you an idea of the performance differences between the GPUs in a similar laptop chassis built for 80 watts, which should be useful as many laptops come with options for either GPU. This does include some VRAM limited results, without those the margin reduces to roughly 15% slower. However, the margin grows at 1440p, as again VRAM is a more significant factor at this resolution. While the RTX 3060 is capable at 1440p, I don't feel the RTX 3050 Ti is as suitable, and generally I'd want to stick to a 1080p display, which is what this sort of GPU is designed for. Comparing highest power limit versus highest power limit, it's a bit of a slaughter for the RTX 3050 Ti, as the RTX 3060, when pushed up to its maximum of 115 watts, is a lot faster. This chart at 1080p shows the RTX 3050 Ti as being 28% slower on average, though there are some large outliers in there. At 1440p, again, it gets even worse, with the RTX 3060's highest power configuration offering 50% better performance outside of VRAM limited titles. Alternatively, the RTX 3050 Ti is 32% slower. This is in line with the specification differences. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti laptop GPU is in a pretty weird position all up. There are some good things here that I like, but also a number of hindrances that see this mainstream GPU offering take a backward step compared to prior generation models. Starting with the good stuff, the RTX 3050 Ti offers largely the same performance as the RTX 2060 when configured to a similar power level. This continues Nvidia's trend of bringing last generation tier above performance down to a lower tier this generation. The current market makes it hard to make comparisons to previous years, but RTX 3050 Ti laptops should be cheaper than previous RTX 2060 laptop launch prices. The 3050Ti also offers modest performance improvements over the GTX 1660Ti in what should be the same price class in normal times. 
Only being around 10% faster in the limited comparisons we could make doesn't make it a must buy, especially if GTX 1660 Ti models are available at a discount. However, the RTX 3050 Ti does support ray tracing and DLSS, where the GTX 1660 Ti does not, which depending on your opinion on those features may add additional value. Newer laptops should also benefit from faster CPUs, which have greatly improved over the last few years, though this is irrelevant to the RTX 3050 Ti itself, just another consideration when focusing on specific laptop models. However, outside of these narrow comparisons, the RTX 3050 Ti laptop GPU is a pretty unimpressive graphics option that I find hard to recommend. One of the major reasons for that is its inclusion of just 4GB of VRAM, which is inadequate for the performance level this GPU provides. Being RTX 2060-like in performance means the 3050Ti should have no problem with 1080p ultra setting gaming, and for the most part that's true, unless texture sizes exceed the VRAM buffer, which is reduced from 6GB to 4GB of GDDR6 relative to the 2060. In some games today, that is insufficient even at 1080p, let alone in the future which will almost certainly see even more VRAM usage. Now there is a place in the market for 4GB VRAM cards. Entry level options like the prior generation GTX 1650 are one example where it makes sense, as you'll often be playing on medium settings as the GPU overall isn't powerful enough for Ultra. But the RTX 3050 Ti is much faster than the GTX 1650, opening the door for gaming at high quality settings or resolutions, where 4GB bottlenecks the card well before the CUDA cores are saturated. The reduction to VRAM in this price category also hurts ray tracing, which tends to allocate more VRAM than traditional rasterization. It's nice to bring ray tracing to lower price tiers, but there's not much point when you don't provide enough VRAM to cope with its increased demands, or even just standard rendering for that matter. 6GB should be the absolute minimum on this sort of GPU. On top of the VRAM issues, the RTX 3050 Ti also faces strong competition from Nvidia's own lineup. The RTX 3060 is much faster, offering around 35% more performance at a similar 80 watt power level, or 50% more performance when the RTX 3060 is configured at its maximum 115 watt power limit outside of VRAM limited games. That's a much larger margin than in higher tiers where something like the 3070 is only 20% ahead of the 3060. With the RTX 3060 only costing roughly $100 to $200 US more in an otherwise equivalent laptop, the RTX 3060 is costing you at most about 20% more than a 3050 Ti for more VRAM and performance between 35 and 50% faster. That makes the RTX 3060 a much better value purchase. You can still find decent mainstream or mid-range options that should satisfy your requirements without having to go too high end, and you'll get a much better gaming experience. Unfortunately, that's a real stinger for those hoping for something great value that's worth buying in today's market. The RTX 3050 Ti should be that, but it's just not happening. Anyway, that's it for this review. If you're interested in getting some more laptop content into your inbox, then consider subscribing. We have got a review of the RTX 3050, the non-TI model coming up. Core i5 11400H should be coming soon as well, and plenty of other stuff, so it is well worth subscribing. If you also want to support our laptop testing, you can do so via the links in the description below. We've got merch like this, which I think looks pretty cool. We've got some Discord community. We've got some monthly live streams, all sorts of cool stuff. Check that out below. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.